Welcome to Show Don't Tell. Today's video is a bit different. We're going to talk not financial or political madness, but cartographical madness. Specifically, we'll address why the prime meridian at Greenwich is a Y. If you stand with a GPS device on the meridian line at the Royal Observatory, it will not read all zeros for longitude. The prime meridian does not run between your legs, and you will not be straddling the line which divides east from west. In old money, it will actually read 0 degrees, 0 minutes, and 5.3 seconds west, or minus 0 0.0015 decimal degrees, and no amount of beating your GPS device will persuade it otherwise. You have to walk 103 metres east, out into Greenwich Park to get to the actual meridian line, which doesn't run through the Royal Observatory at any point whatsoever. Here's where we would like the meridian to be, extended from the transit circle room where Royal Astronomer Sir George Airy housed the transit circle telescope from 1851. Airy timed stars crossing overhead to create Greenwich Mean Time, and in 1884 the telescope was chosen to define the prime meridian itself. And here is where the Google Maps and GPS meridian actually lies. Because we're British, we can't ignore the Ordnance Survey, which has its own completely different meridian line here. If you can explain why the OS meridian is here, please do so in the comments below, because I never found a clear answer. So let's focus on the core problem, why today's GPS meridian doesn't align with the Greenwich meridian. Amazingly enough, even at the time this occurred, nobody knew for sure why this even happened. It was definitely agreed that the new meridian was correct but nobody really understood why, or indeed how, the old one was somehow wrong. The wobbling of the Earth's axis, tectonic plate movement, new ellipsoid measurement, the GPS system, were all proposed as suspects, so how did we actually lose the meridian that we held so sacred? Well, we can dismiss polar motion and tectonic plates because they don't move rapidly enough, so before 2015 theories focused on two aspects improvements in our geometric understanding of the Earth, and the GPS device itself. In order to map the Earth and generate coordinates, we need a mathematical representation of the Earth, or in technical terms, a reference ellipsoid. The globally agreed reference ellipsoid is being constantly updated with new measurements, but the last big change occurred in 1984, following 10 years of fevered academic conferences. Titled WGS84, this is the GPS system ellipsoid. So one theory was the change to WGS84 ellipsoid distorted all the longitudinal lines around the world, moving the Greenwich Meridian slightly off track. The second theory was the GPS system itself. The first GPS satellites were operated in the 1960s, called Transit or Navsat, it was used by the US military and superseded by today's GPS system. The transit system developers decided to use local surveys of their own building, the Applied Physics Laboratory in Laurel, Maryland, to generate the meridian used by the system. So came the second Greenwich theory, that the GPS system was based on an American meridian. It was supposed that when the WGS84 change occurred, GPS had become the global default, so there was no choice but to make the American meridian the new prime meridian, and all of the longitudes would have to move instead. But in 2015, these prevailing theories became redundant, as a group of American scientists came up with a new and provable theory. They showed that the movement in the meridian did not originate in WGS84 or in the GPS system, but rather due to an inherent flaw in the original airy transit circle measurements of time. The new theory was based on gravity, but what does gravity have to do with the prime meridian? Well, let's suppose you're George Airy, and you need to measure the time at which a star crosses overhead. You need a very precise definition of overhead. To do this, Airy used a bowl of mercury to create a reference, as gravity would pull the mercury to a perfect horizontal level, perpendicular to both gravity and the line overhead. However, this approach relied on a simple assumption, that gravity made the mercury level perpendicular to the actual centre of the Earth. As it turns out, this is never exactly the case. 
The reason these scientists from 2015 were able to prove their theory was more accurate measurement of Earth's gravitational forces. This data was published in 2008 and was called the Earth Gravitational Model or EGM 2008. It provided a very high resolution map for local gravitational force at every point on Earth. Okay, I can't resist, I have to mention this even if it's not directly relevant. Can you see the snaky line across the middle of the Pacific Ocean? At the southeastern end are the Hawaiian Islands, and you can see a trail of islands and seamounts in a straight line off to the northwest, then a sudden bend on the completely north to south Emperor Seamounts. You see, there is a hot spot in the Earth's mantle underneath the Pacific Ocean plate. The hot spot creates new volcanic islands directly above it, but as the plate moves away, those islands become dormant and then erode, creating a chain of lower islands and then seamounts like a trail of breadcrumbs. Each island marks where the plate used to sit over the hotspot. Before 60 million years ago, the plate moved directly north over the Hawaiian point, creating the north-south Emperor seamounts. The plate then crashed into another continent and started moving northwest as it continues to do today, giving birth to Hawaiian islands a wonderful story told very nicely by this map. But back to our main subject. Using the EGM 2008 data, the scientists measured the actual gravitational angle at Greenwich compared to the centre of the Earth. The answer was 5.51 seconds of degree, within one standard deviation of Aries' original meridian coordinates. So why does gravity move the prime meridian? Well, the WGS84 ellipsoid is just a geometric shape. It doesn't inherently define a prime meridian. And the prime meridian wasn't defined by the GPS system either, rather by a shadowy international group known as the Timekeepers, or at least that's what the youngest member says when he's trying to impress barmaids. In fact, the organisation is called the International Earth Rotation Service, and they are responsible for rotating, no, for defining the International Terrestrial Reference Frame Zero Meridian, or Prime Meridian. In 1984, its predecessor was known as the BIH, and they had responsibility for maintaining Greenwich Mean Time's more accurate global successor, Universal Time, or UTC. And it was this timekeeping group that was responsible for drawing the prime meridian. By 1984, optical instruments like Aries were no longer used to measure time. The BIH had progressed to atomic timekeeping and satellite measurement techniques, which used the actual gravitational center of the Earth. However, in keeping with the solemn vow of the timekeepers, I like to think, Universal time maintained uninterrupted continuity from the days before these more accurate measurements were made. So when the BIH decided to draw the prime meridian, it wanted to draw a line that maintained Aries' original measurement, but used the actual centre of the Earth as the reference plane. In essence, because of his inaccurate gravitational reference, Aries had always been measuring the wrong time. So the only way the BIH could keep universal time continuity was to solve backwards. They could move the meridian line to where Aries measurements should have been made from with the correct gravity to give his time readings. Find this confusing? Well, let's look at a diagram. Here is the actual diagram from the scientific paper. It's far too confusing to explain, so let's make our own. Let's imagine we're looking at the Earth from the top down, looking onto the Arctic with the South Pole on the opposite side, as seen on this, frankly, photorealistic diagram. Now you've got the perspective, let's move to a simplified representation. So when measuring from Greenwich, they used gravity to establish a line from the assumed centre of the Earth through Greenwich and out into space. This line would then sweep across the sky as the Earth rotated. It's the timing of stars crossing this line that was used as the basis of timekeeping. However, we now know this measurement was not entirely accurate, as the gravitational line did not run through the centre of the Earth, as Aries assumed. The centre of the Earth is actually at a slightly different place, so we'll add this offset dotted circle to represent the actual location of the centre of the Earth. And here's the problem. If we draw a line from the actual centre of the Earth through Greenwich, we create a line that sweeps across the sky at a different angle, producing entirely different measurements of time. 
So if you want to maintain Aries' original measurements of star time, the solution is to draw a line parallel to the original one that does go through the centre of the Earth, but in doing so it creates a parallel offset that moves the Greenwich Meridian 103 metres to one side. Now if we go back to the original diagram, this is exactly what it shows on the right hand side. Here's our original gravitational line and the forces that we used to create it. Then we can add the actual centre of the Earth and we get a parallel line drawn to maintain stellar continuity. To further prove this theory, the scientists calculated offsets for all observatories known to have coordinates prior to the WGS84 system and they found that for every observatory, the current offset versus the original coordinates is accurately explained by the gravitational theory, including Washington DC. So even the Washington Observatory moves during the relocation, so the American Meridian was not a fixed point that did not change as a result of the WGS84 system. So there we have it. No great conspiracy, just a simple decision to maintain continuity from the original airy transit circle measurements. But if you're feeling sorry for Airy losing his meridian, he did receive a consolation prize in 1972. Earth isn't the only planet in the solar system, and it was decided that the prime meridian for the planet Mars would be defined by the crater Airy, and to this day that meridian is the way of designating coordinates on the planet Mars. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed today's slightly different episode. This is Show Don't Tell, and I'll see you next time.